Okay, so I know I've mentioned this like a million times before, but Disney Channel movies were basically my entire life until I was like 18. And like, they used to make so many of them. In the year 2000, they came out with a new one every month, okay? We got Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire and Phantom of the Megaplex in the same year? It was a heck of a time to be alive. But for a variety of reasons, I'm sure, they don't really make them anymore. You know, like, you get like two per year, maybe. But just a couple days ago, Disney released their newest original movie, Prom Pact. Now, everything I saw about this movie was just like exactly the kind of thing I would totally watch any Anyway, so come along kids, let's take a walk. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Two Dots. Now, I've talked about Two Dots before. It's a minimalist, cozy, free-to-download puzzle game on iOS and Android. And let me tell you, this game is a great way to just forget the Mad Max hellscape of real life, if even for just a few minutes at a time, you know what I mean? <laughs> Like, the gameplay looks really simple, and like, it is, but it gets really clever really quick with the whole like, connect the dots mechanic they got going on. Like, every time I think I've seen as far as they can take it, I play another level and I'm just like, how do they think of this stuff? I just cannot get enough of this like, cozy, lay in your pajamas on a rainy day kind of thing they got going on here. The connecting the dots puzzles, the Where's Waldo style scavenger hunts, like, it's perfect for turning off most of your brain and just kind of like, vibing, my dude. I mean, like, it really is just a perfect game for when you're done scrolling down as far as you can your social media feeds, and the algorithm is just giving you like, the most random posts and you're like, okay, I gotta do something else. But hey, you don't have to take my word for it. The game is free to download, so click my link down below in the description or use the QR code right here on the screen to download two dots and give it a try today. Okay, back to the show. <laughs> that's okay. All right, that's enough, Mr. Cameraman. Turn it off. The prom committee is also going to announce this year's prom day. Oh yeah! Okay, so this is our main character, Mandy. Now, Mandy's just your average overachieving go-getter who's desperately waiting to hear about being accepted to her dream university. Okay, this being a teen rom-com, let's play a little game. What school do you think Mandy's trying to get into? Is it A, Harvard, or B, uh, literally any other school? Would you believe it's Harvard? But you know, already, this premise is like kind of weird to me, like j just in the fact that this is a Disney Channel movie, like since when has Disney Channel anything been about 18 year olds trying to get into college, you know what I mean? Disney Channel movies are supposed to be about like 14 year old girls doing science experiments that open up a portal to a secret universe where boys don't have cooties. Are we doing gold dots? Why do people insist on treating Graham Lansing like he's some sort of golden god? Well, the reveal, the reveal of, of this, this year's, year's prom thing. You know, it's probably just old fashioned nepotism. The prom theme is... The 80s! Oh boy, here we go. You tell teenagers to dress up like the 80s and everyone's gonna do flash dance and Stranger Things. You know, as opposed to what the 80s actually look like, which is uh, just denim and flannel as far as the eye could see. Now this dude over here is another one of our main characters, Graham, the cracker. Wait, 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 no, I didn't, I didn't hear how it sounded in my head before it came out. We're gonna cut that part out, right guys? Now, you may be shocked to hear this, okay, but Graham is the top of the food chain most popular dude in school. Which you probably already figured out by his perfectly feathered Luke Skywalker hair and this chin over here looking like Major Glory from Dexter's Lab. But anyway, so now with prom on everyone's minds, that means it's time for prom posals. <laughs> Lansing, are you asking me to prom? What? No, 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 Jody. Me. Owen? Your, your boyfriend? Ben, what you oh. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right, my dude. My dude, there is no coming back from this. Okay, it's you just. It's time for you to just walk right into the ocean. Now, here's where we get to learn a little more about Mandy because would you believe she has a whole lot of thoughts about like promposals and really just prom in general. She's trying to overthrow me, a strong nature. I can't hear this again. Can we talk about anything else? <laughs> Not Harvard. People seem to like the whole Ghostbusters thing. Ugh. Promposals are just another example of the patriarchy affirming its dominance over women. <sighs> okay. All right. It's gonna be one of these movies. So I bet you 10 bucks she's wearing black combat boots at some point in the next 15 minutes. The 80s theme makes it kind of fun. The 80s theme makes them even worse. Can you name one popular 80s movie that isn't totally sexist? Heathers, When Harry Met Sally, Princess Bride, I think, maybe. 
<laughs> Come on, Mandy, I could do this all day. So this guy here is Ben, what? Mandy's longtime bestest best friend. Now, both these kids are kind of like the Darius of their school. You know, everything is lame and dumb and every movie and TV show is weird and cringe and all they do is just nitpick everything all the time. I mean, pff, it's so annoying, am I right? But deep down, okay, Ben actually maybe kind of sort of like regrets not taking part in some of these uh, high school shenanigans, if you will. You've never been to a party. I've been to a party before. With drinking? I mean, I am sure one of the adults had a glass of wine in the other room. I bet you've never even hooked up with a girl. I've kissed a girl before. Kissed? Ugh, what are you, nine? I'm talking about your P in a V. <laughs> what? Stop. What did you, did he really just say that? In a Disney Channel movie? This movie was on Disney Channel. Like, excuse me? I don't have to prove anything to you. You just did. See that guy? His pee has been in some V. Would you stop saying that? I haven't even recovered from the first time yet. Also, look who it is, wouldn't you know? It's, uh, who shows up but Mr. Graham Gigashad. Uh, Graham? Yeah, bud? Have you, uh, uh d decided where you're going to college yet? At a certain point, you never want to hear that question again. You guys understand when you're seniors? He's a senior. My bad, man. What's school you at? Your school. No Nuts Plunkin. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no Nuts Plunkin. <sighs> no Nuts Plunkin? Really? Well, hey, you know, I mean, to be fair, it could be worse, okay? My nickname all through middle school and high school was just the F slur on repeat. No nuts blanket. Someone gave this kid a Snickers in the sixth grade field trip. <laughs> Blew up like a puffer fish. Like, it was crazy. You okay from that? Yeah, I'm, I, I recovered. Wait, 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 hold on, stop. You call him No Nuts because he can't eat nuts or he'll die? No Nuts Plunkett, that's the best you could do here. Nah, 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 you see, you should have called him something like EpiPen Ben. Ha, see, look, there you go, took me like five seconds. Anyway, so that Friday night is Mandy and Ben's hangout night they do every week, where they go to the bookstore, have waffles, and watch a movie. Friday night, you got a hot date? Ugh. Well, I didn't want to tell you, but yes. See what I tell you, look at that, she's lacing him up right now. I'm going out with the most popular boy in school. You're going out with Graham Lansing? Graham Lansing? Angela Lansbury. So later that night, Mandy and Ben are doing their friendship date thing, whatever, and Ben starts to ask the real big life questions, you know? Hey, do you ever feel like we have wasted our youth sitting on the sidelines judging people? But don't you want to just for once feel like, like... Like what? What if this is my peak? I don't have any glory days to look back on. Ben, my dude, you're like 18, okay? Your life hasn't even started yet. I mean, trust me, I had zero glory days in high school, okay? I had the opposite of glory days. My entire life only got better as soon as I left high school, okay? Trust me, you're fine. Anyway, so Mandy takes what Ben just said to heart and decides to do him a solid, you know, as a friend. Haha, <laughs> very funny. You want trite, I give you trite, but only because you're my best friend, okay? But no limos. I'm not paying for hair and makeup, okay? This is it. And no slow dancing. The only thing I hate more than slow dancing is the gender wage gap. Hey, do you get it, kids? Do, do, do you get it, huh? Do you get it? Do you understand the, the, this character's personality yet? Have you figured it out, huh? Do you get it, kids? So they make a prom pact. <laughs> that's, that's the name of the movie. In that they're gonna go to prom together as friends, you know, even though it's like it's totally lame. Am I right, guys? And they're gonna have fun. <laughs> Gross. Anyway, so back at school on Monday, right first thing in the morning, you'll never guess what happens. No, it's Harvard. It's updated. It's over. Harvard, Dr. Down, saving the world, my life, it's all over. Oh, if only there were any other Ivy League schools that existed or non-Ivy League schools of any kind anywhere else in the world. You know, for someone who seems like they really want to fight systemic issues and all that, like, she really sure wants to be in the system real bad. You know, like, going to the oldest, most in the system, capital N nepotism university you could ever go to. But anyway, so, because Mandy has been waitlisted, she's desperate to find any way she possibly can to bump up her application to Harvard. So, she talks to her guidance counselor and finds out that it would help her out a lot if she could get a recommendation from someone with some Kind of sway. Like, oh, I don't know, Graham's dad, for example? So, Miss Chen told you to become BFFs with Graham Lansing so you can ask his senator father for a letter of recommendation? This is, this is manipulation, okay? It's unethical. There is a long history of men taking advantage of women for things far less important than Harvard. Well, I, for one, definitely foresee nothing going wrong with this plan. And so, this is pretty much the main shtick of the movie. Mandy needs to come up with some way to get close to Graham so she can get in with his dad, because his dad's a Harvard alumni and can basically just, like, get her in, no questions asked. Okay, okay, so the plan is, uh, we, we stage a run-in with the most popular guy in school, whom we have never spoken to before, at a party that we were not invited to, and then charm him by super casually bringing up his failing grades, and then ask him for a gigantic favor. 
Well, yeah, when you put it like that, it sounds weird, Ben. But all the same, they put their plan in motion by going to a party where Graham is. But of course, Mandy just can't help herself and has to be all Mandy about everything. Graham Lansing! I know you know who he is. You people worship the ground he walks on, which is absurd because he's a Neanderthal whose only forms of communication are grunts and go bulldogs! And so now it's time for Operation Plan B, where she just runs away forever. Now, while she's doing all of this, Ben was actually getting some kind of actual information that could help Mandy in her quest to trick an innocent young man into giving her what she wants before casting him aside forever, like girls always do. Like, I'm screwed. I'm leading the community garden build for the basketball players and cheerleaders tomorrow morning. No one is gonna get up that early. Look at everyone, they're trashed. So tell anyone who isn't completely faded to come tomorrow. 8 a.m. I'm sorry. I don't mean to keep bringing this up, but like, we got underage drinking, talking about kids being faded. Like, what kind of Disney Channel movie is this? How is this not a Netflix movie? Anyway, Graham is going to be at this community build project thing. So, Mandy heads over there first thing in the morning and gives us all a redo. <clears throat> what is wrong with this thing? <sighs> Here, let me help. No, I don't need a man's. <laughs> I'm sorry. Excuse me? You literally just said you don't know how to use it. What the heck is wrong with this thing? It doesn't even work. Oh, uh, you're doing it wrong. Here, let me show you. Do not approach me, Satan. So Graham shows her how to do the thing, and then she's like, Oh boy, here's my chance to emotionally manipulate and ruin this man. Not bad for Neanderthal, huh? I actually need to apologize for that. I mean, you're clearly not a Neanderthal. Yeah, you're definitely more like a Homo erectus kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, don't I know it? I mean, I didn't think I was, but then I saw Brad Pitt in Fight Club and it just changed my whole world. So they get to talking for a while and one thing leads to another. Long story short, she offers to tutor him in AP Psych, which is like the easiest class you could ever take. But yeah, sure, okay, whatever you say, Mr. Pantheon Pro V. Thus, the entire next chunk of the movie is Mandy and Graham getting to know each other a little bit. You know, she helps him with his classes, he teaches her basketball, and golly gee, what do you know? Turns out he's not just some dumb job. After all, he has thoughts and feelings and stuff. <laughs> he even teaches inner city kids how to play basketball and has deeply rooted daddy issues. Do you get along with your parents? Uh, yeah, with my mom, it's easy. She's a talker, but my dad, no matter how hard I try, I just, you know, the only reason I took this AP class is so maybe he'd think of me as not a complete idiot for once. Oh my goodness, the perfect man. Now all this culminates with Mandy and Graham going on a date to his dad's re-election fundraiser dinner thingy where they hold hands and Mandy's slow dancing now? What about the gender wage gap? The only thing I hate more than slow dancing is the gender wage gap. So here it is, everything she's been working for the whole year. She gets in with Graham, she gets some one-on-one -on -one time with his dad, she gets to ask him for a letter, she's gonna get into Harvard, everything's gonna work out perfectly fine, no problems at all. Am I right, everybody? Now, my wife tells me that you are applying to Harvard. Well, that's my alma mater. If there's anything I can do to say thank you for the help, although I'm not so sure even Harvard is enough payment for what you're putting yourself through with Graham. <laughs> that boy. That boy is incredible. And you should be proud of him. I don't need anything as a thank you. What are you doing, Mandy? This is your future here. You're just gonna give it up for a boy? Wait a second, isn't that literally the thing you said you'd never do earlier in the movie? Let's do it. Let's live out this little 80s movie of yours. Okay, this is not an 80s movie. In an 80s movie, Molly Ringwald falls in love with the cute boy with dimples, going to great lengths to be with him, future be damned. In my movie, Molly Ringwald falls in love with Harvard, going to great lengths to get there, dimples be damned. Mm-hmm. And gosh darn it, what do you know? Here she is, giving everything up for the crimson chin. But, 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 but right after this, Mandy overhears a little something she probably wasn't supposed to. What? Graham never brings a girl to these, and the first time he does, it's some brainiac Harvard wannabe. I mean, he's <laughs> breaking her around tonight. What he spent all afternoon, pulled up in the basement with that girl he was hooking up with last summer. Hey, guys. Graham! <laughs> What's the name of that girl who's over today? Liv. Wow. That's right, even though Graham's been all like, you know, oh, Mandy, you're not like other girls. I can talk to you about feelings and stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, turns out he's been canoodling with Liv the whole time. <laughs> Freaking Liv. She doesn't even brush out her curls properly, okay? So, like, ew. And so Mandy, humiliated, runs away and calls Ben to come pick her up. Now, we need to rewind things just a little bit here, okay? While all of this has been going on, Mandy has had to bail on her friend dates with Ben the last couple weeks, and wouldn't you know, Ben runs into Latoya the head cheerleader slash girl of his dreams at the movie theater and decides to shoot his shot and see what happens. Well, this is me. I had fun. I'm glad Mandy canceled. 
you said you two usually grab waffles after a movie? Yep. I will see you at school. <laughs> no, no, Ben, Ben, what are you doing? Ben, no, stop! But then he tries again and asks her out to dinner at the Olive Garden, which she says yes to for some reason. And then Mandy calls him at the fundraiser thing, and now you're all caught up. I'm so sorry, but this is an emergency, and I will call you later, okay? Ben, wait. Are you serious? And then he just leaves her there with the check. Absolute legend, this man. I'm such an idiot. You know, I thought Graham Lansing liked me. Graham's dad offered me the letter, and I said no. I chose Graham, and he chose... Live? Oh, come on, Mandy, don't be too hard on yourself. I mean, hey, we got 30 minutes left of this movie, so I'm sure things will turn around. If you want to know the worst part, I've been a terrible friend. And what do you know when a crazy plot twist turns out Liv was actually just a friend who was helping Graham with his promposal for Mandy that includes her favorite One Direction songs and her favorite childhood movie, Risky Business. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who's letting their kid watch Risky Business? Oh yeah, I just wanted to ask you to prom by incorporating all your favorite childhood movies. You know, like uh, Porky's and the Girls Gone Wild Miami edition. Anyway, so she says yes because promposals are dumb and stupid. Unless, of course, you know, she gets one. And then they're kind of cooler or whatever. And oh boy, she just can't wait to tell Ben. Graham just asked me to prom. Latoya just asked me to prom. That's great! When I told her that I was going with you, she was pissed. But uh, what did Graham say when you told him? <sighs> You said yes? Two nights ago, you were crying in my car, telling me that Graham Lansing was using you and that he had a girl on the side. So they argue back and forth for a little bit, and this is when Ben kind of spills all the beans about what's really been going on the whole time with Mandy just using Graham to get a letter from his dad and all that. And as you might imagine, Graham is not too thrilled about this. Do you even like Graham Lansing, or is this all a part of your con to get a letter for Harvard from his dad? No, I can explain. You don't need to. And my dad write it before he left. Graham. Gotta hand it to you, Mandy. You played me perfectly. And so, the very end of the movie, she gives the letter back to Graham because she feels really bad about getting caught. She honors her pact with Ben and they go to prom together. Ironically, of course. Okay, don't get the wrong idea. And turns out Mandy gets accepted into Harvard anyway. So, golly gee, I'm sure glad we went through all these shenanigans. And so, Mandy learns the valuable life lesson that friendship is cool. Just before she moves thousands of miles away and will never see her friends ever again. But anyway, then she says her final goodbye to Ben after graduation. I am gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you. <sighs> Goodbye, EpiPen Ben. Goodbye, MaxiPad Mandy. Hey, come on, that was one time in seventh grade. And so she moves away and starts her new life as one of those big old Harvard nerds. Hey, could I get a refill? Sure. Ram, order up! Things got kinda awkward. Well, would you look who it is, if it isn't Captain Adam's apple himself. Well, I was all set to go to UT, because that's what was going to make my dad happy, but someone once told me not to live my life for his approval. So I'm here, taking a gap year, trying to figure out what I want to do, you know? And what you want is here, in, in Boston? Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and so they both apologize for everything and reconnect, and that's pretty much where the movie ends. So to be totally honest here, this movie is actually a lot better than I was expecting. I mean, like, it's a Disney Channel rom-com, but it's also, like, rather mature, and just, like, the whole subject matter itself is not at all what you'd expect from Disney Channel. Like, clearly it's a throwback to 80s rom-coms, just with, like, a modern twist, and this is made, like, very obvious. Let's do it. Let's live out this little 80s movie of yours. But just the whole thing feels a lot more in line with early 2000s Disney Channel movies, like Color of Friendship, True Confessions, or even like Suzy Q from the 90s. I talked before about how Disney stuff used to be weirdly mature for its age range, like Hocus Pocus and The Parent Trap and even like Princess Diaries. And then around like 2010 or so, everything just shifted to be made for 12 year olds. You know, you got like Descendants movies and Zombies movies and like The Swap. I don't know if this is part of some like new content initiative they're doing or whatever, but like this movie is clearly Disney Channel trying to come for Netflix's rom-com lunch or however that metaphor works. And like, to be fair, okay, the first half or so of this movie is just like, I mean, this movie like really wants you to know how Mandy feels about literally everything. You know, it's probably just old fashioned nepotism. Promposals are just another example of the patriarchy affirming its dominance over women. The only thing I hate more than slow dancing is the gender wage gap. But the second half, okay, like when it goes full 80s rom-com, I thought was actually pretty all right. You know, nothing revolutionary, it's really predictable, but like it's a perfectly watchable, pretty well executed movie about friendship and high school and and all that kind of stuff. I actually enjoy this movie a fair bit. 
Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell. Leave a like, leave a comment, all that stuff. Send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com and let me know what movies or TV shows you think I should check out next. And above all, tell everybody have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.